All right, guys, welcome back to the Legal Gentleman YouTube channel, The Hunter Collective. Today, we've got Sean in the chair. Now, me and Sean had a chat, and we had a consultation on the couch, and what Sean would like on the hair would be something that he can get up in the morning, it's easy to do, low maintenance, he doesn't even have to look at his hair in the morning, and it looks all right. That was the kind of, that was the, that was the key element, wasn't it, really? Yeah. Um, and something that we can try and lean up the face and also blend into the beard. So today, what we thought we'd do today is do a hair and a beard trim. Um, now, we want to do something that's going to lean the face, especially when he's got a beard. So, Sean was saying he's had skin fades in the past and different things like that, which is cool. Thing is, though, when you've got a, a big beard like what Sean's got, I mean, I'm going to trim it down a bit, but when you've got a big beard, if you want to lean the face up and you don't want to compromise on the shape of the head shape here, sometimes you're going with a skin fade, you have to blend out into the beard. Otherwise, you end up going really low with the fade and it ends up being chinny, basically, uh, or loads of length predominantly on the chin. Which is all right, but we just a little chat about his beard, and he doesn't want that. So what I was thinking to do today is to lean his face up and to lean it into the beard and create a nice head shape and face shape with doing the lowest point of a number one. Because in that way, I've got hair to blend down into the beard. So that way, I don't have to compromise going too short on the, the skin here, basically, which will end up bringing his beard out or making his face come out slightly. So that's what we thought we'd do today. So basically, what Sean wants is a nice, easy, low-maintenance haircut and a nice bit of shape on the beard as well. So that's what we're gonna to do today. So I'm thinking short texture, not like, kind of like a crop-ish length, something that is kind of a very similar length all over, maybe slightly longer at the front, just to kind of keep a nice sort of a profile shot. So it's keeping the head shape at the back and working through and giving a nice angle towards the front, but just something that he can get up. If he doesn't want a product, he doesn't have to, you know? Just something that's very, very low means. And like you said, hopefully, you don't have to look on them. You, you know, you can just do this and it's done, basically. That, that's what we're aiming for today. Um, with the beard, I'm just gonna turn you towards the camera, Sean. So what we're gonna do today is we wanna, he's, he feels like it's a lot of predominantly kind of really heavy and square here. So what I thought we could do today, blend down from a one, we can blend it nicely down to the cheeks, but still leaving some length through here, and then kind of maybe slightly angling the beard a bit more to really give that square shape coming into an angle. So almost following the jawline, not that short though, but following it into the jawline and just kind of be basically tidying up and just, giving it a good, nice trim, basically. But mainly about the, the, the face shape as well with the beard, because again, beards can kind of change your face. So when you've got a beard, a haircut might not work with the beard, because it can kind of make your, your face come out more, or you, you lose the leanness, basically. So that's what I thought we'd do today, for sure. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give it a wash, give it a condition, and then we'll start. What? Right, guys, so I've just um, shampooed and conditioned Sean's hair. Now, I'm combing this out from the crown, because we're gonna, because obviously we need to look at the elements and the, the growth pattern for Sean's haircuts, because we're going short crop, short kind of textured crop in a sense. We need to work with what his natural growth pattern is. So his crown, what we're doing, I'm combing it out from the crown to see the growth pattern, because I need to work with this, because we're going so short, we've got nothing to hide it. We're not brushing it back over the crown, which we don't need to worry so much about the crown then, we're not parting it. So we don't need to worry about if it's going to sit all right on one side or whatever, because it's going to sit over the crown or whatever. We're working with the crown, but like in some of the previous videos, I leave the crown to the very end because this has got to sit well. At the moment, it's kind of just sitting all right when it's wet. So I'm a bit worried that it, if I take it much shorter than this, it will stick up. Because if I just move that slightly, that's starting to raise a little bit there. Do you see what I mean? It's starting to stick up a little bit. And I'm worried that if I go shorter on that, it'll pop out. And I don't want that. This needs to all balance nicely. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna section off in front of the crown. So maybe, let's say a centimeter or two in front of the crown. I'm gonna work to a length that I think. Now, this is my judgment. Now, I know Sean just said, I want a haircut that's gonna be easy to do in the morning. So he hasn't given me much direction. All he's given me is that. So I'm gonna use my knowledge of what I think will work for him. So I'm thinking, let's have a little look at the top. So the fringe is a bit longer than everywhere else, which is fine. The crown's a little bit shorter, quite noticeably shorter than the front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the base length. As you can see, I'll pick that up. It's fairly short in certain areas, as you can see. A little bit longer through there, a little bit shorter there. So what I want to do is I want to use what the shortest point of this is as the sort of as the primary uh, length and then just graduate a tiny bit longer towards the front. So if I go any shorter than what the shortest point is now, it'll stick up. So I, I want to use that as what we've got now. So that's my guide. I've got a guide from the previous circle that I want to take it to. So there's a section. There's my shortest point there. I'm going to match up nice and straight, following the head shape around. And I'm going to point cut into this because a point cut finish I, I actually said this to Sean when I was chatting to him. Your hair is very similar to mine. It's quite straight. It's got a bit, like, slightly more bend in it, but I know the texturizing techniques that I'll use for mine to make what the haircut that Sean wants is basically what I like. Okay, a kind of short, low maintenance, 
easy to style here. And, and as, as, as honestly, as flattered as I am at the comments you make about my hair, I, I really don't try that hard. Um, I did message somebody the other day about, um, he dropped me a message on Instagram saying, how did you style your hair? And there's a couple of screenshots of me, like mid haircut. And I was thinking, I don't know, man. I think I just dried it a little bit with a bit of salt spray. And that was it, because I'm, I'm quite low maintenance when it comes to my hair. I don't feel that I need to spend that long on it, unless it's something quite, you know, a quite heavily styled haircut. So I always try and have something that's quite low maintenance, quite easy to do. And also that grows out well, because I don't, I, I'm, I'm busy, you know, in, in my job and my life. So I'm, I don't really have the time to sort of, the, like the luxury of time. I've got school runs to do and things like that. I don't have the time to get kids ready, uh, sorry, to get my hair ready when I'm taking the kids to school. So it's, you know, something that I can just pop a little bit of, you know, Mac playing or whatever, style it and I'm done. And it looks nice. And that's the thing I want to try and give to Sean today is that exact same approach that I have with mine, you know, which hopefully you'll be happy with. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon you'll be happy with it, mate. You'll be all right. Confidence. <laughs> and straight up. And then the final section, the fringe, pull that straight up. And there we go. Now lift that back. Get in that to the side. See how nice and straight that is through there. Shorter through the front, through the back, long through the fringe. All I've done is pull it straight up. Like that. See? What we'll do? We're gonna follow the head shape because I'm gonna use the clippers to create squareness. And with Sean's as well, one thing I noticed when I sat down with him as well, his head doesn't concave too much here. The bone is quite solid through the side. Some people's concave slightly here which you then tend to have to leave to create the squareness. But with Sean, we can, we can work the clipper work up and off, using his head shape to create squareness in the circle. There we go, now that's got a corner on, we don't need. We'll take that off. This is just a little bit longer through the corner, which I don't think we need. So I'm not saying the other barber who done it last didn't know or whatever, it's just that I personally think for the haircut that I'm gonna give Sean, he needs it, all right? I think it'll just make it a little bit harder to style as it gets a bit longer. So I'm working with his head shape, which I can see will create a square shape either way. Going <laughs> cross-checking, and I'll pull that back. I'll see him getting a nice bit of shape through there now, and that's all looking even as well. But with the sides, we're not looking for texture in the sides, we're looking for just shape. So I'm using this, it's just creating that shape. I'm using this as a guide to where to when I start my clipper work. Finishing at the section at the back. And there we go. Nice. Nice and small sections. Now I've got a guide from there now, and I've also got my guide through the back. Straight up and off, guide from there, guide through the back. Go through, one more guide, Let's go back to our original fringe. Put that in. Mirror in the other side. Angling my finger the same way, I'm following the head shape. You can see more lenses coming off now. The fringe, and again, look at the angle of my fingers as well. I'm following the hairline as well. Back to the recession point. Nice and straight. Mimicking the, the previous guy, uh, previous sections from the other side as well, so nice and small. It's a good way, good marker of where to start as well. Now again, we're not looking for a heavily sort of longer fringe, just something that's going to create a nice profile shot. Uh, and just give a kind of a bit more shape through the top of the head. That's what we're looking for again. There we go. That's nice. Now I'm going to dry this off. I'm going to texturize. Let me see what we've got now. If you come from the side lane, so a nice little bit more length through here. And we need to really break that up. As you see, it's very sort of one length almost, right? We really, really need to break that up. So to texturize this, switch up my scissors now. Use a longer scissor. And what we do, I'm going to angle his head slightly forward, put up the section, I'm going to work into the section, as you can see there, using my comb as basically my fingers, and cutting straight into it, right. Now again, by keeping the guide where the crown was, I'm not cutting into the crown. I'm going to turn him around to the front, and angle his head down slightly as well, put my scissor in, pick it up, use the comb as the guide, I'm going to break Put it into the comb. So you're almost using the blade against the comb. Scissor in, on the top, the front, and cut in. 
we're pulling cut at the root as well. So you can fairly wide sections. If you, take, if you take two small sections, you cut right in, you end up removing the length. So try and take fairly wide sections. So you can give yourself six or seven sections through the top. Look how much hair comes off now. It's all the thickness that we're taking out. But look how much length we're kept in there. But look at that, when I move my fingers to that, look how much that moves around without anything in it. Imagine when he gets up in the morning and doesn't want to put anything in it. Looks great. Now the last bit of this is the fringe. Now if you lean back, rest your head on my chest, there we go. Now close your eyes for me now because this will go in your eyes. Close your eyes. So my finger is right on his forehead here, right? Now we're not looking to, we don't have to worry about it sticking out or having some bits falling down on his face because it's a very low in circle. It's not looking for that kind of perfect swoosh. So my fingers are flat onto his forehead, hair coming through, pointing forward as well. And I'm going straight in with the scissor. And as you can see what I'm doing, I'm breaking up that fringe. Look at that. Really breaking up that fringe there. Top up now, in a nice, sure crop, low detection. Imagine putting a little bit of product in that. That would really mess it up. If I just turn them towards you, just look at the texture in the top of his head. The light does it justice here, but that's just me running my fingers through it. So I mean how much that moves around and falls around, right? So imagine he gets up in the morning, a little bit of water, runs his fingers through his head, it's done. Imagine if he adds product on a night out, it looks even better. And that's the thing, product should just enhance what you've done, it shouldn't create it all the time. Certain haircuts like the teddy boys and things you've done in the past, you have to use that to create the look, but a lot of it does come down to the cutting. So create the haircut first and then just enhance it with the product. Start on my three and then we'll wait to about here. Two and a half up into where my three finished. I'm really starting to pull away and kind of pull off with that clipper to nice give a nice nice gradual and um, blend into the three. Going into my two, working up into the two and a half. So sort of halfway between the two and a half and the three. So when you do like say a harsh line. The fade always looks fairly heavy in areas because you, you know you've got to try and blend the line out. Whereas when you graduate down, it's a lot of a softer finish as well. So I think it works better on these kind of haircuts sometimes, not as aggressive. So I, that's why I'm opting to use it, th this method. Making on to my one and a half now. So I'm doing I'm leaving lines of hair where I know to start from. That way you're graduating down, so the opposite way of doing it, and uh, then putting the line in. I'm working up and off into my two. There you go, I'm down into my one now. I'm working up into the one and a half. In terms of to just pull the clipper out as we're getting into kind of halfway between the one and a half and the two. working the half nice and low then working through the lever to get down to zero so just give it a nice clean finish to this haircut there we go now I'm gonna work on the blend from the three into basically our transition area at the round of the head open off you're just working over the cone to that two into the three there. Let's pick it up. See my guide from earlier on? But my guide from what I cut with my fingers there. The guide I've just cut and the guide I need to cut now. So again, everything is a guide. I'll just have a quick check on the mirror. That's sitting nice and lean through there. As you can see, it's starting to really come down and nice and tight. So as we get lower down with the beard, we'll work out how to keep that nice and lean. It's gonna be a lovely after shot this. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to edge it up. So I'm going to keep through here, 
nice and soft. Again, I'm not looking to try and create a standout part of this haircut, really. I just want to be low maintenance, so everything balances. You're just shaping a little bit of the sideburns, only a little bit, just to add, again, just add a bit of strength to it. Again, I don't want it to sort of loop too high around the ears unless you're looking for that really sharp, kind of real sharp edging that will really stand out when you're you know, out and about and stuff. But again, because this haircut needs to be effortless and also it doesn't want to you know, have to put product in every day, I don't want something that's going to be kind of standing out too much. I just want something that's going to just fall perfectly. Like someone will go, you look good, but I don't know what it is. There's not one particular thing about you that has changed. I just think it might be if you have a haircut or something. Not something that's going to be like, wow, you had a wicked fade in your neck or you've got a really sharp edge. And I want it to all just be quite seamless and quite effortless looking. I'm not looking to try and don't need to strengthen this neckline too much. It's got a nice wide neckline. And just work up into that neckline with my mini trimmers. What I'll do is I'm going to start to bring the crown over into the last section underneath. So pulling it across and over directing it back here. Not much to take off. Just where the crown's a bit more predominant on the right hand side. And then what we'll do, we'll just pick it up. And we'll just work into the crown. But again, still point cutting it. Move an length that we don't need. Now that length I guessed at the start is kind of worked out perfect because that hasn't really been touched the crown, but it almost blends into everywhere else. So it's not going to stick up. It looks the same length as everywhere else. So that's why I use that guide as the kind of the starting point of this hair because I, I just had a feeling it would stick up if it went too short. So I haven't touched that crown. But as you can see, it looks completely blended in. Now what we'll do, I'm going to give it a little blast off so it's more comfortable for him. And then I'll start on the beard. Right, so first, look at the beard. Sean's shaved his neck here. Was that done today or yesterday? Today. Today, yeah. So Sean's put his shape in already. Now, I'm gonna just strengthen that off. I think that's a nice line, actually. I think we're having a big beard. I think that line's actually quite a nice shape because side on, he's still got that nice angle. So if you have a little look at the comb, um, the Adam's apple, oh, it's quite a nice angle. So I think he's done a good job there. Give, give credit when credit's due, you see, Sean. So you've done a good job there, mate. Uh, clearly, he's been doing this a lot longer than, you know, some people have. So it's obviously, he knows what he's doing, right? But essentially, when you're doing a beard like this, you want to have, a, you, you need to look at the overall shape that you're going to create first. So you need to almost, if you want to have that quite sort of more predominant length here, you have to bring it in at a slight angle to create that kind of effect of it coming kind of longer and then shorter. Because otherwise, a lot of people tend to get a lot of bulk through here and it ends up just ruining the head, ruining the beard. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of build up through here will change the shape through here. So always slightly angle it, sort of kind of coming inward. So it's almost like, like that, really, which is what Sean's done already. So that's good. Do, I pop a towel over the eyes. What this helps me do is just stop any hair going in their eyes. So, and it's also, it's quite a nice relaxing time. You know, a beard trim is probably one of the only things that guys can tend to get done that is a bit of a kind of relaxation time, you know? That's, that feels quite normal to do, right? So I just put a towel over the eyes, fold it through. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna blow dry this a bit straighter. All this will do is just help me create a nice shape because where it's got a lot longer and it's just out oh, through time, it starts to curl up and whatnot. I'm just gonna wet it down a little bit with a bit of salt spraying. Like that. And then I'm just gonna use my round brush just ever so slightly. I'm not gonna be working it through this way, I'm gonna be working it outwards just to straighten it out a little bit, all right? Just to see the exact shape that this beard would be if it hadn't been a, you know, don't, don't forget, we're filming this at 20 past eight at night. So I'm guessing Sean's been up early and he's had the whole day to go with his beard like this. It's almost like he may have been sitting there like this, he may have been rubbing it, scratching it. So it's not gonna be, it's almost like when you don't wash hair and a guy comes in at six o'clock in, in the evening, he might have been messing with it like this, might be sticking out. So you don't exactly know how it's gonna grow properly. So this is my kind of way of almost washing the hair, but the way of doing it on the beard. And I work it through this way to try and straighten out that beard. Now don't forget, the heat needs to be on the, the sort of the cooler setting, not being cold setting, like a, like a medium or low heat, because obviously you're on the face as well. So it's one thing I just thought I'd, I'd throw in there. But the whole, don't try that, that's a home kids, don't be whacking a, you know, the heat as Dan said, you know, and burning the face. So he doesn't want it to be too much chin. So I'm guessing, I mean, don't, don't forget, if you take quite a lot of length off the bottom of the beard, like you might think it's not a lot when you do it straight away, but then you start blending everything else and it can look quite short. So I'm gonna take off roughly, say, I don't know, maybe a third of an inch, shall we say, okay? I'm gonna put the shape in first, put the length in. So uh, open blade, lever up, I'm gonna work straight down, okay? So more than it being in your wrist, like if you blend it out, 
use your whole arm to go. It steadies the clipper a little bit easier as well. So literally lean in to the beard and that way you create a nice even sort of a line. So using that as my guide, I'm gonna start to work this way as well. And I'm working again, just keeping the same idea, working that straight down. Now what we'll do is I'll just use my comb and just slightly taper this in just to find out where the line is underneath. And work up to the line. So almost like I'm using this line as a guide, I'm just working freehand clipper over comb to match it up. I kind of work around the jawline almost, not as high, but just mimicking the jawline, or create my own jawline, shall we say. My three, I'm gonna work and take that length off. I'm working right down into the corner. Two and a half. Into a two, now the blend point gets a lot lower now. So obviously we've got less and less room to blend. One and a half, and then finish up into the one. And you're working straight down. So what you're basically doing is mimicking the face shape. And you're, this will all become apparent when, you, when I actually sit them up in a minute. I'm just using a bit of clipper over comb just to blend in. And cut into the line that Sean's already put in. Now these are a lot sharper than my big clippers. And these work a treat if you're doing any smaller detailing. In the corner of the clipper, just create a nice little natural curve in there. Create a bit more of a blend through there now. So, working clipper over comb, getting gradually longer as we get into the beard itself. Then working through the back and pulling it towards me. Again, this is like an over direction cut. It's getting longer and longer, so it's more balanced. Cap off any of them hairs. Keep a nice bit of shape as well. So a bit more control with the scissor. It's at your speed. So all I do now is I basically mimic the same thing I did there. So I know it's gonna work. I know the shape that's already in. I'm not trying to find a guide somewhere. I'm just using my own visual to see exactly where that needs to go. Just about half an inch before the jawline. Then I'm working down the face, keeping that same angle. Very nice. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pop a hot towel on his face to prep the skin for using the razor work. And then we'll blow dry out and we'll set him up and you'll see the shape then as well. So a little bit of beard oil in first, or beard and shave oil. Dilute it to be able to shave with it. Original towel off. Put this through the beard as well. Because the hot towel sits over the face. Because this is a beard and shave oil, what this allows you to do is allows you to shave with it and also allows you to soak it into the beard to keep it nice and moisturised as well. So you're doing sort of two things at once here. A nice big hot towel. Wrap this around his face. I'm gonna cool it down first. Hot towel comes off. Do that again. Work it over the area you're going to shave. Comb the beard down, the shape you want it to be. And working and following the line you put in with your clipper before. 
bring that down as well just to sharpen that off a little bit you can work up we didn't take too much off so as you can see there's already a bit of redness coming through from the shave this morning i don't want to kind of accentuate that anymore and trying to be light as well remember blade is fairly flat against the skin stretching the skin out Blow thin the Adam's apples there, pull the skin across and stretch it so you're not going over the Adam's apple. Finish. Bit of the beard oil now, non, um, non diluted into the beard. Would you like to sit up for me, Sean? Mm -hmm. Nice and slow. And there's the trim on the beard. So you see the shape we've created there now, it's a lot more rounder, it's not as square. And it's just sitting there. You see how much more leaner it looks down the side as well? Pounds off, mate. <laughs> You happy with it, yeah? I'm great, yeah. Awesome, that's amazing. And I'm not just saying that. Thank you very much, I appreciate that, yeah, I appreciate that. So what I'm gonna use on you today is just a little bit of the Regal Gentleman Mac Clay. I mean, literally, the tiniest bit. I'm talking like, not even a sort of pea size amount. It's probably a bit less, right? Working that through my fingers. This is completely matte, so it's not gonna look like you've got anything in your hair at all, okay? So work it right the way through, and this is if you're feeling a bit, like you wanna make it a bit more of an effort in the morning or whatever, right? Just rub it through all the way through like a shampoo and then just style as preferred, okay? Pinch little bits and that is literally has little time you need to spend on your haircut to make it look good. So what we did um, to Sean's hair was we did a very low one back in sides because he had the beard. I wanted to try and lean the face out. The main thing I wanted to create today was a nice head shape and face shape with the beard. So we did a sort of, say lengthwise, probably an inch, maybe an inch and a bit on the top. Um, and cut that basically for the shape of his head. Um, cut into the fringe, but left the fringe a tiny bit longer, just following literally the arch of the hairline. Um, Use the three down into a one to create the kind of leanness, but working it fairly high up because the sides of Sean's heads don't concave so much. It's fairly square on the side as you look at it anyway. Um, and then you yeah, blend it down to a one. Um, heavily texturized top, only with scissors. So using a bit of um, scissor of comb through the top and point cutting it into the comb to create that really choppy texture. Sean's hair is really thick and fairly straight. So that choppy texture works really, really well for this as well. Very similar to my hair. On the beard, we picked the length that you kind of left me to it really. You wanted a little bit less chin, kind of make it look a bit more shaped. So I just took a little bit off the chin here and then just kind of created a bit more of a kind of, uh, more of a kind of angular beard, more than it being really square. And then just blended it down from the one into the beard really, as you see the process. Um, obviously it's hard to recap the process, but as you see in the video, it's just mainly freehand, which we work through clippers and scissors as well. All right? Yeah. Cool, man. Thank you very much. No, I'm not desperate, then. <laughs>